One great addition to your functions and formula power is the ability to reference a whole row or a whole column in one go. Previously, you would have had to reference a range of cells within a column. So if we wanted to pick up the whole of column A, we would have to say count or sum or average A1 colon A1 million and whatever. Quite a long formula. Or we keep it a lot shorter by finding out where the end of a set amount of data is. Now you don't. You can just point your function at the whole column. So if we wanted to count how many people were in this particular sheet of employees, I would want to count the number of IDs. So I could scroll and scroll and find the end. Or let's go into the summary sheet, add a little label, number of employees, and then add our function equals count, open brackets, the employee sheet, the whole of column A. So by clicking on column A, it picks up the whole column. We can see the reference in here is then simply A colon A. No numbers, so no cell row references at all. Close my bracket, return, and it tells me there are 100 employees in that list. So you can see the syntax there, column letter, colon, the same column letter. The reason it's there twice is because we can actually apply a formula to a range of columns. So we could add in C there. So A colon C counts the number of cells that contain numbers in the whole of column A, whole of column B, and the whole of column C. Return, and we still have 100 because B and C are text cells. So they're going to return nothing in the count option. Let's just change that to count A to prove that it is counting all of the columns, and we get 302. So in those three columns, there are 302 cells with something in. And not only can we apply a function to entire columns, we can do it to entire row. So looking at my employees information, maybe at this particular row here, I'd like to count how many of those cells are actually filled in. Let's go back in here, say count cells completed. And we use the count A function again, equals count A, open brackets, come back to the employee sheet, click on a row that you'd like to count, and you can see the syntax is seven colon seven. So there's no mention of any column references. It's the whole of row seven, just as when we did the columns, it was what looked like a repetition of the same letter, but is actually a range reference. So column A to column A, this is row seven to row seven, but it could just as easily be row seven to row 12. And when I return, then gives me a count of 99 cells. So there are 99 cells in row 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 that have some content. Now hopefully you can see some use for the ability to use a formula that is applied to a whole column or series of columns or a whole row or a series of rows. Now, if it just so happens that you want to count entire rows or entire columns, but not consecutive rows and columns, so I don't want in this particular case, row 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. I just want row 7 and row 12 to be counted. Let's do that in the cell below. So we start off with equals count A, open brackets, go back to the employees and click on row seven. And we can see it puts the correct syntax in, TBL employees, exclamation mark, seven, colon seven. I then type a comma for me to then be able to go pick up another entire row that is not next to row seven. So you can see how I've picked up row seven and then comma row 12. And I can follow that logic and do comma row 19, then close my brackets and return. And we find that the count is 50, but this is counting the number of cells with some content in row seven, row 12, and row 19, but not any rows in between any of those rows. So this is applying any function to a whole column or a whole row or a number of columns or number of rows and even a number of non-consecutive columns and non-consecutive rows.